Hi everyone, today I have Colin Brady, who is the Director of Student Success at Mitchell College. I'm very excited that Colin's here with us today, and you're going to share some great information about Mitchell with us, so I'll let you take it from here. Thank, thank you so much, very happy to be here. Um, always loving to spread what Mitchell College is all about and if it's the, the perfect fit for you. So, um, Mitchell College is located in New London, Connecticut, which is the southeast corner of um, the state. So, um, one second, just going to make sure. So, um, we're a four year co educational, private, independent, liberal arts residential college. So, uh, it was founded in 1938 as a junior college. So, um, our campus is very unique. So, it was the summer home of one of the Tiffany children of the Tiffany jewelry um, family out of New York City. So, um, when she was, um, you know, retired and old and had grandchildren and tried to decide to give away the property. Um, she left it in the deed for it to become a school. So um, it started out as a junior college um, and really be, was known um, in, as the Harvard of JUCOs um, because it had a campus. So we had a gym for the basketball team. There was dormitories, a couple um, academic buildings, um, which you didn't really get um, back in those days of community college and junior colleges. Um, so the main house, um, which houses our president and more of our administrative building, is the original Tiffany house. Um, been renovated many times. You know, it's funny, every few years they say, we got to do some renovations so it doesn't fall over. But uh, it's, it's really great there. And so, um, and one of our gems on campus is our Red Barn, which you'll see on our website, which is a remodel, a distinct remake of the original barn on campus. And that's our Black Box Theater holds events for students. So um, we're really tied into the community in that sense. We're located right on the Thames River. Um, we look out, out to the Long Island Sound and out to Montauk, New York. Uh, we have submarines that go by campus um, every Tuesday because the submarine base is just up the river. Two private beaches. Um, it's, a, it's a really great place. It's um, 68 acres um, and we own 26 acres that are woods uh, where we have cross country and walking trails. Um, and it's really in the, the south end of the city. It's a very residential college. Um, you know, it, most of those homes are second homes because they are on the water. So it's people, uh, just their second home. So during the school year, it's not heavily crowded. And, and then in the summer months, um, you know, you're going to just be looking out at boats uh, docked in the water. So um, that's kind of our area. Uh, you know, it's two hours to Boston, two hours to New York City, um, right on the train. Um, it's great, great, easy, easily accessible, um, and lots to do in a small little city. Um, we have Division Three athletics. Um, so we participate in the New England Collegiate Conference um, with schools in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Um, and we, we, we sponsor uh, men's and women's sports, basketball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, softball, uh, cross country, um, golf, and I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but we, we have a great vib uh, vibrant athletics program. Our athletes make up about a third of our student body. Um, which is around 800 students. So um, some of those students play multiple sports and, and they are recruited athletes. Um, we do have pretty, pretty good success with our teams. Um, we play in NCAA Division III tournaments uh, in multiple sports. And, um, you know, one of the only benefits of the pandemic was we were able to start our new athletic complex uh, earlier than we, than we would have. So we're, that's going to be raring to go when we can get athletes back on the field. But we'll have a turfed multi-use uh, rectangle field for soccer and lacrosse and club rugby, and then a turfed baseball facility as well as a softball. So it's really gonna up the experience for our student athletes as well as students playing intramurals or just exercising because uh, even during the, the couple uh, you know colder months, you can still be out there because it doesn't turn to mud. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, so athletics plays a, plays a major role and a big part of our community building. Um, you're going to hear me use the word community a lot. That's really what the, the mission of Mitchell uh, really is, is this place to, uh, to grow and, and to learn. So that's an important piece. Um, we have an honors program for students that qualify. So we're looking at students with high GPAs, 3.5 and above, a lot of community service, um, and students that want to take on that extra piece. So there's some mentorships, uh, you know, obviously a more challenging academic profile, uh, things of that nature. Um, performing arts um, is another thriving, growing uh, area. Um, as I mentioned, the Red Barn that we have has a black box theater uh, with a local group called The Flock. And The Flock is a pro professional group that uh, 
in kind of traditional New England bartering style. Uh, they can use for our space for performing, but they also have to teach and participate in our arts program. So uh, we do two, perf uh, two uh, plays, uh, one in the spring, one in the fall. And we have chorus, advanced chorus, chorus. we have uh, individual music lessons available. We have music space for students that want to maybe get a rock band or just a band going together. Um, so again, really, really, uh, there's a there's a dance team and a cheer squad that would that would go under that co cohort, um, and it, it's really great. I will say that with all of our athletics and our honors and performing arts and our students that are just they're taking classes because they want that small kind of inclusive environment. Um, we do a lot of things that are really, really student led. So the cheer team and the dance team are gonna be led by students, but of course having staff and faculty advisors. Um, we're big believers at Mitchell to put the student at the center of the table and build a network around him or her um, and help them grow. And, and those skills of, of leading a group discussion, of organizing and planning and renting out space, those are as valuable as uh, writing an essay in a lot of different ways as you move forward. Um, Another major component um, that makes up about a third of our students is, is students that are coming for our comprehensive academic support program. Um, so, you know, we do get students from our, from, for athletics that come from outside the New England area, but then a large part of the students that are coming are from New, the New England area. Uh, they're coming from that small environment, the honors, performing arts, that one might, may be. But our, our academic support, um, because of its, how well known it is, um, does draw nation and uh, nationwide and, and internationally as well. Um, so that's just a quick glance. I would say the most popular major on campus is early childhood education. So our students, um, we are one of two schools in Connecticut that can give you a teaching degree, uh, teaching certificate, excuse me. Uh, so you can be in a classroom, a kindergarten classroom, a first grade or a second grade uh, right after you graduate. So that's, it's a really great incentive because you're able to be in that public school classroom. Um, so that's, that's one of our more popular majors. Others would run around hospitality. Our, our, our ties to the casinos, which are right in our backyard, um, are great hospitality internships. Um, some of our business and marketing can also work in those casinos where you have the WNBA team that's housed at Mohegan Sun as well as the lacrosse team. So we've had a great little pipeline of students um, taking classes, getting their, their internship and ticket sales or um, you know, hosting the suite for someone whose business has rented out a suite, you know, bringing them their food and their drinks, um, as well as security. So, you know, all different majors, we have a lot of internship programs uh, with some, kind of our local partners, which is over about 40 local partners. Um, all of our students do have to have an internship to graduate. Um, we will provide you one um, at junior or senior year. Um, and if students find one on their own back home, um, that is also acceptable as long as the, the other side uh, will take care of that. So we've had students go down to Disney we've had, in the hospitality realm. We've had students be get a law firm down in Washington, D.C. because they're criminal justice. So um, we're getting students out there in that experience. And that, that really starts in their freshman year. So along with classes, uh, you're going to be taking um, job shadows and, and it, it, exploring with our career development center what it is you may be interested in uh, because we don't want i always tell the story i was an education major and i didn't get into a classroom until the second semester of my senior year and i remember walking in and being like i hope i like this because i put a lot of time into it so we want to get students out there um, and experiencing things as early as their first year just so that they can hone in on what it is they want to pursue um, a couple other great things before we really uh, dive into um, the support programs is uh, some innovative things that we do here at Mitchell. So um, instead of taking four sections of English 101, we've eliminated about eight, six or eight classes of general eds towards your, uh, towards your graduation degree. And we've replaced those with um, skill-based classes um, about skills that are gonna continue on when you go into any workplace. So they, that could be communication, time management, problem solving, critical thinking, group work. Um, and of course there's content, but it could be examining the play of Hamilton, for instance. So um, it's those skills that no matter what it is that your job, because when you, we do know when we look at the stats, you know, 60, 65%, I haven't looked recently, of people are doing jobs that they didn't go to college for. So when you're in college, why not continue to learn the skills no matter what environment it is, you gotta be able to work on, you gotta be on time, you gotta, you have to be able to work in a small group, you have to be able to communicate all of those. So 
those are some required classes in our abilities model, which is, is, is a really great thing and our students are really responding well to it. Um, the other pieces are, are the way we divide our semesters up. So uh, one semester at Mitchell College is divided into two sessions. So session one runs from about September when we start um, right up until you would go home for that Thanksgiving break. And it's 12 weeks and students can take four classes or they could take three classes or a mix, some students, but you have to take three at minimum. So you take those classes, um, you take your final, you go home for that week at Thanksgiving, you relax, you eat your turkey, um, and you just have a, an enjoyable time with nothing hanging over your head. And then you come back and you take one class that meets every day for two and a half weeks for three hours a day. And that's for that one credit. So um, why we do this is it gives all of our students an opportunity to within the restrictions of the government concerning financial aid and full-time status, it gives our students a chance to really kind of design a, a, a schedule that works best for them. So um, a lot of students will do take three in one or four in one. Um, and it, it's a really innovative way to try to uh, differentiate the education and provide a lot of different options for our students because we are restricted through credit hours tied to your financial aid and, and housing. Um, the first year it happened, the students were a little wary of the, the long class every day, but that was just the first week of it. And then the second week, they really kind of locked in and understood that they really liked it because there wasn't a lot of shifting. It was really they could hone in on their schoolwork. And the professor is not going to stand up there and talk to you for three hours um, just spitting facts. They're going to they're gonna do different activities. There could be a field trip. There's going to be small group work, um, really breaks up the classes and, and allows a lot of learning and teaching to happen. So those are just a couple of the things at, at Mitchell that are super innovative and those are for all of our students. So, um, you know, the, the, in front of you, you just see the activities. We have over 50 clubs, all again, back to that student run. Um, if you find two students that have a similar interest and we don't have the club, you can start your own. Um, it's, it's really, really involved. Uh, not to sound too big brothery, but we track students and making sure that they're getting involved on campus. We don't want students to just be closing their doors and, and things like that. We're not sending faculty after you to make you do stuff, but we're just gonna try to make sure that you're having the experience that we want you to have and you wanna have in that pace. Um, and the average class size is about 14 students. So uh, that's the small Mitchell College difference. So you really get to know your professors, your professors really get to know you. Um, of course, there's some bad negatives to that, but mostly positive. We have really dedicated teachers um, at, at Mitchell College. They, they really like Mitchell College because they teach first and foremost. They don't have uh, you know, all, a ton of other responsibilities except to just be teaching available and, and really touch base with our students. Uh, at our last in-person graduation, our student speaker talked about how at what other college could you FaceTime your professor before the final was due to make sure your portfolio was looking good. And she said only Mitchell College. So, um, you know, I, I, I hope this quick glance has given you a sense of our community. Um, it's, it's really, really important. Um, I was, it was really great last year. Uh, we were nearly full residentially. So we have about 475 beds. Um, and we had about 458 students living in them. So, which is really, really strong. It creates, creates that community and, and a vibrant campus scene. Um, so I'm just gonna transition into some of our comprehensive academic supports. I think that that's a really uh, key part of that. So when we talk about cohorts at Mitchell, you know, we talk about a third, a third of athletes, a third of students, you know, and then a third of, of students that are using our academic support. And there's always crossover between those things. So um, it's a really, really important piece. So first we have the Benson Learning Center. Uh, the Benson Learning Center was founded in 1981. So it's one of the longest running academic support programs. So um, it, each student gets a learning specialist that they meet with one, two, or three times a week. Um, it's a supplemental fee for how many hours you pick on top of your tuition. Um, students will work with their learning specialists to develop academic skills and strategies um, to help those students grow as independent learners. So it's not a place where you come and you bring your homework and you say, I need to get this done, um, and they help you complete that. They're working with you on the strategy to independently complete that homework. So if it's uh, anything in the writing process, math computation, executive function skills, time management, whatever it may be, your learning specialist is good to design a program to help you build those skills. So uh, each semester you can sign up for the Benson Learning Center as much as you'd like it. So if you have a 
if your advisor and your, your student success team believes that your uh, semester is going to be very challenging, they may recommend that you up your Benson Learning Center time or vice versa, you know, and so it's, it's really flexible within that. Um, you know, when you apply to Mitchell College and the Benson Learning Center, um, we're going to ask that you have updated educational testing, which would be in three years. Um, and really that's going to allow your learning specialists and the, the administrators at the BLC is what we call it to, to create that program individualized for you to help you grow. Um, and our learning specialists will all, all say the same thing to a person that their job and their goal is to put themselves out of business. So they want to grow so you don't need them anymore. <laughs> um, so it's a really, really great program well used. Um, this upcoming fall, we'll have the most students we've ever had in the Benson Learning Center, which is a really, really great thing since 1981. Um, so it's a, it's a really beneficial, beneficial program for sure. Um, new to the college and new to kind of the space of academic support nationally is our Mystic program. So we debuted it last year uh, with nine students. And this is a program for full-time college students and we're providing residential and social support. So we know um, when we talk to families that are looking to make the transition from high school to college, we know that a big part of the transition is the downtime that you're faced with in college. In high school, it's very regimented. It's class, 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 lunch, homework, class, sport, piano, work, whatever it may be, you know, there's not a lot of hours in the day and it go, they go by fast in high school. But in college, it could be class, long break, class, long break, long weekends, all of those things. So we wanted to provide um, a touchstone for our, our students, which would be the director of the program with a one-on-one -on -one mandatory weekly. Um, it can be more, it cannot be less, but that the, really the goal is to have access that's going to those um, professional residential staff that's gonna help the student navigate, whether it's that downtime, whether it's having a roommate, whether it's how do I get involved on campus, um, you know, how do I, how do I really improve my relationship with my peers that I'm making? You know, how do I cross the friendship bridge um, from acquaintance to friend? Um, and then how do I plan my weekends? Um, and then we'll have students, uh, certainly this year in the Mystic program that, that um, got too involved and then they weren't able to prioritize and they were making plans with five people and leaving people and not. And so we wanted to put something in place to help students feel comfortable and start to really embrace the full college experience. Because what we researched and know is that when students go home at Halloween, um, and that's just a, a phrase that I, I made up maybe, I'm trying to patent it, no, I'm just joking. But uh, when, when students leave school early, it's, it's rarely academics um, because you can work through that, even if you have a tough first semester. It's because students aren't feeling connected to the campus. Maybe they're lonely. Uh, maybe they're, they're struggling with some anxiety around, you know. I've, I've been in this great place of high school, now it's brand new. So we wanted to really, uh, you know, try to help students navigate through that piece. So that it's that one-on-one -on -one with the director and then the cohort of mystic students will live on the same floor um, in a dormitory to try to build a smaller community um, and have a specific mystic only event. So if it's bowling, going to a movie, going out to eat, um, you know, they, they really set it up for the group. So we had nine students in it. Uh, it was a great success in the first year, um, given we had to leave in the spring, you know, we didn't have the full, uh, full experience, but we're really excited and we're up to 25 students for this upcoming year. So we're starting to see the growth and the interest in the program. And we're really, really excited about um, it being a, another option to support our students. Can I ask a question about that, Colin? Please. So do you have, is there already a thought about how, how large that program could grow to? Is there a sweet spot for what you think would be ideal? Yeah, so we, we are trying to be smart with our growth. Um, from nine to 25 is, is, a, is a solid growth from us um, because we still wanna be able to, to, to deliver as we work out the kinks of a brand new program. So, you know, I think that the program could be um, similar to a Benson Learning Center, probably a little lower. The Benson Learning Center is about 185 students. Um, and so, you know, it could be maybe, maybe 100. Um, you know, I, I really, you know, it's all would all be coming about staffing, but I think that we're going to be smart with our growth, but we're certainly looking to grow it as as a as a support program for our students. So it wouldn't be 75 next year. It's going to be smart and, and continue on to, to grow that way. It is a supplemental fee on top of your application, but you are getting um, supplemental supports in that way. 
So we're still working out the ideas of how big we want to grow it, but we want to be smart about it and make sure that we're delivering and providing the program as we grow with it. Yeah, it sounds like a great program. That's why I'm asking. I could see potential for growth with that because of how unique it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then the, the, the third really supportive program is our Thames at Mitchell um, program. And what the Thames program is, is a transitional year for students that are college able, but maybe not college ready. So, you know, we just talked about the Benson Learning Center and the Mystic and all aspects of that are part of the Thames program, but, but much more support and full circle support. So the best way I describe this is imagine it's a school within a school. So it's a true gap year program for students that aren't ready to take on the full time life of college. Um, there are many programs that are like this, this gap year and transitional, but what makes Thames super, super unique is that it's located on a college campus. So the Thames dormitories are on our waterfront campus, right down on the river. Um, they have great views and just are really nice. <laughs> Envy of campus. Um, and they have their own kind of Thames headquarters. It's called Umbrella House. And that's where the director of the Thames program and all uh, the tutors, the advisors, the residential hall directors, which are professionals, not students, um, are, are, their offices are based out of. And students get a support um, in, in an academic schedule. So it's, you're gonna have, the first semester will look like the following for a theme student. You'll have an English or a math, and that could be for college credit or for not college credit. And again, part of, part of my role at the college is to determine what the best route for our students are. And so doing reviews on the educational testing, which is of course required with Thames, student interviews, parent statements, all of these things will help us kind of build a profile of student and of course input from the student. So that English or math could be for credit or non-credit depending on where they're at. The rest of the classes, one is gonna be a seminar class and that's kind of a how-to college in a lot of different ways. So there's some social aspects, there's some requirements of, of evening meetings and such for that class to get students involved on campus um, and, and support them there. Then there's a class, it could be an elective. So it'll be, uh, sometimes it's a psychology class or a science class or a history class. You know, I know a science class uh, was great because they were going over to the Mystic Aquarium across the bridge and being behind the scenes. And that's a really, uh, important place in New England. So if a seal in Rhode Island is up on the shore, Mystic Aquarium will go get it and kind of figure it out. And students get to go behind the scenes and check that out. There's also history of New London, which is pretty fascinating. Uh, Native Americans. And then there was, it was the whaling city. So there's a lot of history in that. And the, those two remaining classes to get you to those five total are going to be uh, non-credited. So it takes the pressure off of the timetable and your instructor is going to work with you on how to make a B paper and A paper, um, how to plan out a five page paper that's assigned four weeks, you know, it's due in four weeks. How do we make a plan for that? Um, just really supporting students so they can keep preparing to uh, increase their tools and their strategies to be successful when they move on to full-time college. So every student in Thames is gonna have a, an advisor and a residential hall director that they meet with weekly uh, at minimum to check in kind of globally around how things are going in classes, you know, working on skills there, and then how things are going residentially, very similar to some of the um, mystic program attributes, you know, a roommate getting involved, um, things like that. Um, and the biggest part is Thames students are completely immersed in the Mitchell College community. They eat in the dining hall, they can grab a sandwich at the sandwich shop, they can go to participate in any club, activity, all of campus life. There's just two things that Thames students cannot they can't play a division three sport because officially they're considered a non-matriculated student and it's an NCAA rule. And then secondly, they don't have access to financial aid because again, they're the non-matriculated student. So um, those, but otherwise you are a mem member of the Mitchell College community um, through and through. So a lot of our students will take anywhere from eight to 17 credits in that full Thames year. Um, that first semester, like I mentioned, is, is pretty similar to, to what I laid out for every student. And then the second semester, uh, the directors will really try to individualize it on where the students are at to build them that next natural scaffold, if you will. Um, about 85% of our Thames group will matriculate over to Mitchell College the following year. A um, lot of reasons for that. Um, obviously, as you, I've mentioned before, there's 
great support at Mitchell, but now there's a level of comfort, groups of friends, you have your club, you kind of just know the campus life and how things work. Um, about 5%, 5 to 10% of our, we'll do a second year at Thames um, and, and just utilize the supports again, um, which is totally fine. Um, two is the max that you can do at Thames. And then there's a five, then within the last 5%, there would be a couple students each year that go on to a different college or university. Um, normally that's because maybe Mitchell doesn't have what they want to study. Um, but we'll always count that as a successful Thames year because that's the idea. And then there are a, a handful of students that are coming into Thames to see what it's like to have that experience on a college campus, but highly supportive and highly structured and not the full uh, ramp up, if you will. And then decide that college isn't their path. And so we work with those families on what the next step is. Um, in terms of transition out of Thames, there's no surprises. Um, we're really believe in strong communication with our families. And, uh, you know, they're going to know in winter, you know, the path ahead. So it's not May 1st when uh, deposits are due and we're letting student families know. Um, an average Thames class is about 50 to 55 students a year. It's really our sweet spot. Um, the classes that Thames students take are um, just with Thames students. So it keeps those classes small. We make a couple big to help prepare the students for what it will be like um, at full-time college. Um, but you're taking it with your cohort because again, you're taking some non-credited classes. Um, it's a really, really strong program. Um, you know, it, like, I, like I said, it's a school within a school, but you're part of the community. Um, and I think our theme students feel included and I think they feel really um, that it's very beneficial and it, they, they've had a lot of great success um, moving on to Mitchell. And so it's always nice when a student um, will identify themselves when they graduate as I, I'm Thames at Mitchell, then Mitchell graduates. So it's really great. And we accept our Thames students and all of our students um, in a very uh, full circle, holistic approach. Uh, we know students are coming from all sorts of different uh, high school experiences. So uh, it's never a uh, an straight line. You know, it's a meandering path and, and that's what Mitchell College is all about as well. So we, we really take a great look. Um, and part of my role is to really um, we may we may get a family that's like I'm not sure if my student needs Thames first or if they can go directly to Mitchell. Uh, my role is certainly to help uh, navigate the family through that piece, um, getting input from other people and and kind of making a recommendation for there. Um, so that's that's the Thames program and, and our great comprehensive um, academic programs. Um, and as I mentioned up above, uh, again these are our most popular majors um, for our students. Um, I will say that the most popular one for our first year students is UNSUD, um, and that's quite all right. Um, but these, these, these are our most populated majors within our, in our college. Um, I guess I'll just conclude with, um, you know, within the last five years, Mitchell College has renovated every building on campus and built a new athletic complex. Um, we've seen enrollment and retention and graduation rates increase um, because we became a four-year school you know, 20 years ago. And in that, that's very uh, toddler-like in the scheme of when colleges are around. So the institution has really matured and it's, it's in a really great space. We um, welcomed our new president, uh, Dr. Tracy Espy on July 1st. She comes to us from uh, Pfizer College in North Carolina. So we just are in a really great space with a lot of momentum for our college. And, and I think that coming to campus uh, you'll really get a feel of that community and that sense and that small tight-knit group and, and, and see if you could see yourself there. So I uh, hope everyone uh, comes to visit, uh, reaches out. I, I'm available for Zooms and phone conferences if you want to learn more about Mitchell. And uh, I appreciate everyone uh, listening to me. Thank you so much, Colin. That was really good information. And, um, and you can, I mean, the, the size of the school and, and you can just tell from your your passion about the different programs. It's just a really unique place. I think there's so much, it has so much to offer and I love the different pathways. I love there are these different options and the fact that you will walk families through what might be their best option, which I Absolutely. think is incredibly helpful because on the surface it may look like, okay, I just, you know, maybe, maybe I just go the traditional route, you know, and just enroll. Right. But you have these great 
options for them. Um, and I do, like I said, I like that you will be able to counsel students into finding the right fit. And the location is great. I love your, the, you know, the statements you made about their opportunities and things like the hospitality industry, having that right in your backyard, all those, all those options in terms of internships and real tangible experiences that's incredibly valuable so um so if the, if if people would like to reach out do would you be the appropriate contact is there a list of um contacts on the website how would how would they know yeah. who they need to talk to so uh, you can certainly start with me and if you're if it's uh, i can get you to the correct person within our admissions office depending on what you what aspect you're interested in uh, but certainly if you're on our website um you know, there's a list of folks with, with you know, their role and where they are. Um, but we're a tight knit group. We communicate every day, as you can imagine. So certainly start with me and I will absolutely get you into the right place um, of, of, to find out more information. And we're really, we've really improved our ability to have an online tour. So we have a, a drive up one uh, for right now because students can't be on campus quite yet. So you mm -hmm. kind of drive through and follow your map. Um, and they would, they've been doing some video recordings of, of getting up there. But I will tell you this, is that I, this spring when the pandemic first started, I had a young Thames staff member that was living on campus that stayed. And we would Zoom with families where he would walk around on mute and I would just narrate what we were looking at. So, we're, you know, I think that's the spirit of Mitchell is we chat, we're just, uh, we're adaptable. You know, we're, we're flexible, we're adaptable, we're gonna make it work. So, um, you know, please give me, me a call or anyone that you might find on the website, we'd be happy to, to tell you more. I love that. I, and it's, all, it's authentic too, when you do it that way, because you never know when you're doing a, a live virtual tour, what, <laughs> what you might encounter along the way. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that's great. It does make it feel like you're actually there. So, well, th thank you for taking the time today, Colin. I really appreciate it and loved hearing more about the programs at Thames and would encourage everybody to get online and check out their website and also um, get, you know, get in touch with Colin to see if you can do some virtual visits in the meantime with them. So thank you so much for spending the time with me today, Colin. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome.